Artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. Got one of these? Your cell phone uses AI, from facial recognition to Siri to Google Maps. But recent advancements have some experts saying this could be as monumental as the internet itself, and it's starting to be used in our community. From the Hollywood writer's strike to Capitol Hill, artificial intelligence has made headlines. And on the streets of South Bend, it's sparking some skepticism. You hear about it all the time in school, but, you know, it feels like it's taking over everything. It's definitely going to go wrong. I mean, they did a whole series on it, Terminator. I just think it's terrible. And prevent the future. So what exactly is artificial intelligence, or AI as it's called? Artificial intelligence is the general idea that computers are doing things that before only humans could do. Notre Dame professor Dr. John Behrens leads the new AI project at Notre Dame. It's an effort to help students and others understand and use AI. In the first wave, it was mostly about prediction, like predicting where you should drive and predicting how fast it would take you to get there on Google Maps. Now the new AI is about generating things, generating new kinds of images, generating new kinds of text, things that were very clearly only humans could do just a year or two ago. ChatGPT changed the game when it launched a year ago, showing the world just how powerful AI had become. In just seconds, the tool, when prompted, can sift through enormous amounts of data to create human-like images, voice, and text. That change was unexpected. It's much faster than they expected. And some of the computer scientists are saying, well, we planned on seeing that in 10 years, but we're seeing it now. So what's going to happen in 10 years and 20 years? The question is, can they reach a point of autonomous reasoning? Many believe this generative AI could change how we learn, work, and interact. And businesses are starting to take note. Everwise Credit Union uses AI to improve efficiency in its marketing and customer experience. This is a chatbot you'll see on Everwise's website. We feed it questions and answers, but then as members interact with it and ask it things, it learns how to create better responses. In the healthcare industry, hospitals are using AI algorithms, and it may be more widespread than you think. With ChatGPT, that's kind of opened up a whole new world of opportunities. Dr. Scott Ashowski with Beacon Health System says AI is being used right now to assist doctors in administrative tasks. AI is also helping in early detection and treating patients faster, trained to spot abnormalities in mammograms and strokes. We still want to use artificial intelligence in a way that assists us as opposed to directs us. So it's, it's really being used to augment the care that we deliver as opposed to directing the care. But at Beacon Health, this growing technology comes with caution. The key is we want to make sure that the, that the data that gets presented to us is accurate. There's going to need to be a lot of research done before we really start to trust the artificial intelligence to help us do certain aspects of our job. As AI evolves with the potential to transform healthcare. That's where the topic of regulating AI comes in. How do we use this technology and make sure it's accurate and at the same time protect you and your information? It's something governments and businesses around the world are grappling with right now. In the control booth, Leanne Tokars, WSBT 22 News.